Uh, we've been calling it the Excrement Express. Uh, we've been calling it HS Poo. Uh, we've got all sorts of funny names uh, for this innovation that is actually called the Bio Ultra Train, uh, which will take the strain uh, in the future if uh, eco campaigners have anything to do with it. So this is a train powered by human waste and discarded food. It's being developed right now, capable of carrying 120 passengers. Uh, and, uh, of course, it is aimed at cutting air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, so uh, I suppose this is a very good thing, isn't it? Uh, let's ask railway expert, friend of Talk Radio, Christian Walmer. Uh, good morning, Christian, and a very happy new year to you. Uh, good morning. I've been out for my morning exercise already. You'll be glad to Hello. Uh, Hello. Yeah, yeah. Are you still having your uh, early morning exercise, Christian? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, but I am outside. Uh, oh, OK, I'm that's better. You, you faded away then. Uh, right, we okay. can't have that. Tell us about uh, what do you think about the Bio Ultra train? I mean, we've been making lots of jokes about it, uh, but uh, th this is a glimpse into the future, an eco future for the railways. Yeah, I don't want to put the poo on it, really. But um, <laughs> don't you not, start? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be, uh, you know, a total solution to uh, Britain's railways. But these sort of niche uh, kind of green developments are interesting. Mm. You know, hydrogen is another one. Uh, there's various other ideas of of kind of reducing uh, the impact of uh, trains on the environment. And uh, they're, they're lovely ideas. And, you know, this one you can have a lot of fun with. Uh, and it might have some use on, on certain lines. I mean, they're suggesting that, you know, it might be lines where you can't afford to electrify because it's not worth it. But you could have this sort of uh, uh, train, which incidentally operates on the methane, not on the yeah, poo itself. Yeah, yeah OK. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to go into the details, of course. So it's rather, yeah. dis it's rather distasteful, actually. But uh, I suppose, uh, you know, this is a, a great idea. Could it, you know, in theory, this is a, a fairly small looking train, uh, only can carry 120 passengers, but couldn't we make it bigger? Can couldn't we have oh. great big, uh, you know, uh, intercity expresses of powered on? Uh, 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 yes, I'm sure you on on methane. I'm I'm sure you could actually. Um, and they're saying, I think I think slightly optimistically, they're saying that oh, this could run for 2,000 miles. I think they mean 200 miles actually. Uh, okay. I don't think it could run for 2,000 miles on one tank, but uh, I might stand corrected. But uh, yes, I mean, they, so. It, what, what, what is innovative here is is, is really not the, the way the train is, is, is powered, but, but where you're getting the methane from and how you're uh, using that uh, rather than uh, kind of other fuels. That's the revolutionary bit. And, of course, uh, that could then be put into bigger engines um, and, uh, you know, run uh, trains in the future. The trouble is, as ever with these technologies, is the cost. Uh, you know, hydrogen is particularly expensive to develop, and this might be quite expensive to actually uh, generate uh, the methane from um, the mm. various bits of waste that you yeah, no, so, put into the system. So, yeah, also they will be able to use waste from pigs and poultry, but you're saying uh, it may be something of a pipe dream in terms of uh, create, getting enough fuel to run a lot of these trains on a regular basis. That's right. And, and extracting it uh, might prove ex expensive. I mean, you have to ask yourself, uh, you know, why this hasn't been done, uh, you know, 100 years ago as, you know, uh, we generated uh, steam from coal to power trains. And that was uh, the most uh, effective uh, means at the time. You know, will this uh, uh, new technology uh, ever be cost effective against, say, uh, just electricity? Uh, or even diesel uh, or other other kind of uh, power sources and that that's that's the issue and uh, you know this is an experiment being funded by the government of course and uh, you know would would it ever be commercially viable that, all those questions but you know this is great I mean I say it's great that they're trying these things they're great that they're getting a bit of publicity for the a good publicity for the railways at a time when as you know, uh, you know, passenger numbers are, are down by about 75% on the normal. 
Uh, yes, that's, uh, so we've been, uh, as devoted cliched hacks, uh, we've been patting ourselves on the back for the Excrement Express and HS Poo, uh, which of course brings us to HS2. Uh, I know that, like me, you have your doubts about the HS2 project, and t try to explain this to me, Christian. Uh, I uh, often go past uh, Euston Station uh, on my way to work, uh, and Euston Station, there's a big area of grass outside and there's a load of people uh, in a permanent camp saying stop HS2. It's, it's a protest camp to stop HS2. HS2 is already a long way ahead, isn't it? What is the point of that protest camp? Uh, no, I mean, the, 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 the decision over what exactly happens at uh, Euston hasn't even been made yet. So how that station will work uh, is still uh, really just uh, an idea rather than a kind of properly worked out concept. So, uh, you know, they are presumably campaigning to get the right sort of uh, buildings there. But they're also campaigning to stop it. I mean, I, I you know, I think you know they've spent about ten billion, um, uh, but you know, there's my, another. 70, 80 to go, we don't know. So Yeah, and the rest. Uh, you know, yeah, the rest. So it is quite feasible that it could be stopped. I don't think politically uh, it is feasible. I think that uh, Boris Johnson and indeed the Labour opposition uh, are in favour of this scheme and uh, it will get pushed through, come what may, despite the fact uh, that uh, the numbers using the railways are massively down and are likely to be down, uh, down for a long time. Uh, but, you know, I agree with you about this. Uh, I think this is the wrong scheme. It's uh, very expensive. We could upgrade existing lines when they get crowded again. And indeed, we could pause this project because it ain't going to be needed for quite a long time if passenger numbers don't go up again. Yeah, I mean, explain what would be better. I mean, you and I discussed this uh, not so long ago. Uh, I mean, I'm not, certainly no expert, but uh, what talking to my friends in the north, uh, what they would like to see is a much more intricate rail infrastructure uh, for uh, that area that was so uh, wrecked in terms of the railway tracks by uh, Beecham all those years ago. They want a restoration of a good system of railways linking all the cities of the, and the towns and the villages of the north. That would be a better way to spend the money rather uh, than uh, these great big lines that just get you to Birmingham 10 minutes faster, wouldn't it? Uh, absolutely. I mean, that, that's what I've argued for all, all the time and, and I think it would politically it would be uh, supported uh, as well my my concept would be something like network southeast for the north right network southeast was this brilliant idea of british railways to, to integrate all the commuter services brand them with uh, this idea network southeast run them more efficiently uh, invest in the in the system and and with with nice new trains which which are not new anymore but they were they were the 465 networkers and uh, that's the sort of idea I'd like to see in the north. Branded trains, you know, trains for the north or whatever, uh, electric, fast, between all those cities that we know and love, you know, Liverpool, Manchester, Newcastle, Leeds, mm. whatever, link all those uh, cities with uh, uh, high-speed uh, expresses that were comfortable, air-conditioned and, and uh, roomy. And I think that would do far more for the North than, than this mad idea of running a, a train that's costing tens of billions of pounds up to it. Why do politicians always gather around projects like this? As you say, this is not a party political argument. All the parties go, oh, yeah, railway system, billions. Of, yeah, let's do it. Why are they so keen on this kind of project? You know, I've, I've asked myself, and I've been writing about this for 10 years, you know. I mean, there's stuff on my website that is 10 years ago yeah. <laughs> writing about it. Yeah. And I've been asked in this question. I ask a, a lot of and I think... They're just seduced by the by the headline, you know, this looks like a, a, a good project on the face of Modern it. Modern country, it. all that high yeah, speed. all yeah. that kind of, oh, the French are doing it, but they've got a different geography, but they ignore that, you know. Uh, other countries are doing it. We have to keep up with it, despite the fact that we have a much better regional rail network than, than virtually any other country. You know, our intercity services, they're no longer branded as such, are actually better than most kind of regional trains in, in uh, other countries, and yet we've ignored all that and said, oh, we must have this new line, even though the case for it is very much not proven. And I think it's that, that's seduced, but, but I am, I'm still, I still wonder why 
politicians, some politicians don't try and make more out of their opposition to it, because in private, there are quite a lot who are against it, yeah, particularly, you... on the Tory, uh, particularly on the Tory side, actually. Yeah, I think yeah, very much so, and some of them not that private about it. Some of them are pretty public about their opposition. Last, que- last question, really. Uh, in our fantasy world, uh, we'd love to see this project stopped uh, and recalibrated, as we've discussed. Uh, is there any way it could be stopped to say that our dream came true and the politicians suddenly saw sense and said, "We're not going to waste it, or you know, hundreds of millions on uh, billions on this. Uh, let's stop it. Can it be stopped now? Well, if you or, remember, or is it a runaway train? <laughs> yeah, it's a runaway train, Kevin. If you remember last year, there was a review of it. Um, and that kind of basically uh, allowed it to to, to continue. Uh, they have now spent serious money. They've just let some more uh, big contracts on this. Um, there is debate about whether the eastern leg will be built. So that's the bit that goes uh, essentially from north of Birmingham through uh, up to up to Leeds yeah. via uh, Sheffield, um, or possibly via Sheffield. I haven't actually decided that. So that that might, I think, that might be the ultimate compromise, which will be the worst of all worlds, because then we'll have a half baked system that isn't very useful to anybody, <laughs> um, and we'll spend most of the money on it. But I, I suspect. Uh, that's where we'll end up. But, you know, uh, I'm 71. I think I'll be pushing daisies by the time uh, <laughs> any of this comes to uh, uh, comes to fruition, I'm afraid. That's, I, I rubbish, that's <laughs> rubbish, Christian. That's rubbish, Christian. I happen to know that you're going to live forever. Uh, yeah. Listen, uh, thank you so much for your time. A very happy New Year to you again. Uh, Christian Walmart, their railway expert.